In terms of the folks who uh, organized the meeting, so your organizers are uh, myself and Tully and Ryan and also Jarvis, uh, who's from Northwestern. So if you see us around, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to ask us. You'll also see folks uh, in uh, Roscon shirts who are uh, master students in the new uh, master's program in robotics from Northwestern. And they're here volunteering, helping to run the event. So please uh, talk with them if you have any questions. And thank you very much to our volunteers for, for helping us put this on. And of course, the program committee. So when we put the, you know, we put out a call for proposals for talks, people submitted talks, then we had a review process, and that was a combination of the organizing committee and the program committee. So these are the folks who decided uh, which talks were going to make it on the docket for you to see over the next couple of days. Thank you very much to them. So the program, uh, we've got a, a, a pretty fantastic uh, uh, variety of talks. So as, as we've done in the past, we're doing a mixture of long talks and short talks. So there are some are gonna be about 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes, and those are the ones that are really getting in depth on a particular topic. And then we've got ones that are uh, 20, 25 minutes, so that's more of a kind of just giving you a, a taste of, of some new tool or some application. I do wanna note, uh, one schedule change, which I've highlighted here. Uh, this morning, where the arrow is, that was going to be uh, Enrico Hoffman uh, talking about the Coman project, but he missed his flight from Italy, so he's gonna be tomorrow, and Dirk has uh, uh, generously agreed to go this morning. So we've got one schedule change. It's updated on the website, but it's not on your printed agenda. So that's a swap between this morning and tomorrow morning. The structure of the days, is, they're, they're pretty much uh, the same in that we're gonna have a morning session, morning break, uh, another morning session, we'll go to lunch, and then we'll come back and, and do the same thing in the afternoon. Uh, what, you're, what I would recommend you do during those breaks is go check out the exhibition rooms. This is a map of the floor that we're on. Uh, so we're in the Monroe room in the, the bottom right. Uh, our sponsors have set up some great exhibitions. Uh, they've got robots, they've got demos, uh, and it's just around the, uh, around the corner. So you just need to walk uh, kind of, oops. Oh, I guess I can't do that. All right, so you just need to go uh, out and around past the elevators, and then you'll find two rooms over there where all the, uh, all the sponsors are. So please do go check that out. So you would have seen in the schedule that we're doing lightning talks. This has been a really popular feature of Roscon for the last couple of years. So the way this works is we've got time blocked off in the schedule for folks to come up and just advertise whatever project you're working on. So you've got uh, a maximum of three minutes and a maximum of three slides. So you just get to come up, we're gonna run one after another. We'll be very strict on the timing. You're not gonna be able to talk longer than three minutes no matter how interesting it is. Uh, and we've got one session today and one session tomorrow. Uh, the way this works is you need to sign up before the end of the previous break, whether that's a, that's a coffee break or a lunch, and you are going to give your slides to 
this guy. So uh, you need to find him uh, sometime today if you want to present uh, in a lightning talk this afternoon in the 520 session. So find him. He'll have a computer. Uh, you bring. You can either. You can just give your name. There's no obligation to use slides for this. You're, it's only three minutes anyway, so there's no problem if you get up here and just talk. Uh, if you've got slides, uh, you'll need to get them to him so to get them on that computer, and then he's gonna. We'll, we'll run through from from one machine. Uh, it's a really fantastic way to just get an advertisement out there for whatever it is you're working on. Now, based on uh, feedback we've, we've gotten from previous Roscons, right after each lightning talk session, we're going to do a uh, birds of a feather session. So in the past, we've, we've had this as a kind of a, uh, it was a feature of Roscon, but not built into the schedule. So we actually carved out time in the schedule to do this this time. Uh, and the way this works, it's, it's going to be right after the lightning talks, which means that lightning talk session might be a good time for you to advertise a topic that you want to get people together to discuss. Uh, any, any aspect of, of the system that you really want, you, you think there's a, enough of a community of interest to bring together to have a, a focused discussion on it, uh, that's what the Birds of a Feather uh, time is for. Uh, so the way that's going to work is that there are sign-up sheets that are out by the registration desk, I believe. So this is totally self-organized. There's, there's nothing set here. Uh, there are sheets that you can sign up, you can basically propose a topic, and you can come and then plus one that topic. And the topics that have enough uh, interest demonstrated, those are the ones that uh, before the start of that session, we're going to allocate space to those groups, and then you're going to go get into those groups and discuss. And when we do that, we'll have some people in here, we'll have some people out of the foyer, we also have a couple of rooms on the floor above us, uh, and that's, that's how that'll work. So, uh, in the past, this has been a great time to get uh, people together to talk about uh, topics of common interest that are just much more efficient to discuss in person. And then, so this time we actually carved out time in the schedule to make that happen. Okay, who are you? Uh, we have, as of yesterday, we had 188 people registered. It's gonna be higher than that because we've got people register, registering on site. This is the breakdown based on uh, my going through the attendee list, looking at affiliation and putting you in one bucket or another. So what's interesting this time is that definitely industry is dominating. So if I look at the, the affiliation, we have many more people here from companies than from universities, which I think that is representing the, the, uh, the shift from ROS being used just in labs and universities to ROS really being used by companies for prototyping and even for product development, which I think is a, is a very good thing for the whole community. Um, there are also some others, uh, and those are basically folks who didn't give an affiliation. And these days, everybody has a, you know, everybody's working in a little stealth startup. And so I think we have a lot of people here who are doing a variety of things but aren't able to share their affiliation. And that's totally fine. That, that's actually, I think that reflects some of the, the excitement and energy that's going in the robotics community in general right now. So, what's new since last time we did this? So, last Roscon was uh, May of 2013 in Stuttgart. And since that time, we've released Hydro. We also had a, a kind of a mini Roscon that we called Roscong, uh, held in Hong Kong in association with ICRA back in May this year. And then we've also released Indigo. Now, based on feedback from all of you, uh, we've, with Indigo, we've slowed down the, the distro release process. So we used to do it every six months, and then we asked you and you said, mm, that's, we never update that fast, stop doing that. We said, that's great, that's way less work for us. <laughs> so now we do it once a year, uh, and with Indigo, this is our first uh, uh, long-term support release. So this is a release that we're gonna actually, we're committed to supporting and applying patches for an extended period of time. So what we recommend to people is if you were building a new system, uh, we really recommend that you build it on Indigo. That, that's gonna be uh, the, the thing that will be stable, and we will support it, we will patch it, we will keep rolling uh, devs for it. What else, what else has happened in the community? So this, these are uh, metrics reported uh, by Tully, who uh, put together the, the new report. So um, what we do is periodically look at various uh, aspects of the community and try to measure how we're doing. Uh, you know, it's, it's notoriously difficult to figure out how many people are using your software that's open source, right? You can't, uh, anybody can download it, anybody can mirror it, uh, they don't have to tell you that you're using it. And all those things are great, but it also makes it difficult to measure impact. And so we're, we're working on getting better at that, and, and these are some numbers uh, now that we've been doing this for uh, a little over a year. So if we look at the page views at the, at the Ross Wiki, we're approaching a million a month. And this is sampled for one month. 
but that's almost 50 percent, and almost a 50 percent increase over last year, um, which is you know that that's that's really substantial. Uh, we've got much more participation in Ross Answers, but then the downloads are, are kind of amazing. We've got uh, 50,000 unique IPs downloading from our uh, our package server per month, uh, and that's up 340 something percent from the, the previous year. So that's that's at least 50,000 people who are either installing ROS or updating a ROS installation each month, which is kind of amazing. And this doesn't count mirrors, and it doesn't count people that are behind, uh, uh, you know, NATs in university settings or in, or in companies. So this is, uh, I would say, a very loose lower bound on how many people are installing and updating ROS all over the world, which is, I think, great. So. Uh, for a talk I did back in the spring, I was trying to think of other ways to measure the impact of ROS. So I went through uh, the ROS users mailing list and the Robotics Worldwide mailing list and gathered the, all the job announcements that were either sent to ROS users or uh, Robotics Worldwide and mentioned that they wanted ROS experience either as a, as a requirement or a nice to have for the job and then put them into two buckets. So these are folks who, from April 2013 to April 2014, uh, had put out job announcements in academia looking for people with ROS experience. So we've got uh, universities from all over the US and, frankly, all over the world. And then in industry, there were even more. Uh, so we've got you know, all the, you know, everything from small startup companies to big research labs to big companies are looking for folks with ROS experience. And I think that this really demonstrates the impact that we've had as a community. Now, this system that, you know, that we built together and that we've all been using in our various projects is starting to become a thing that when a recruiter is looking for someone to take a robotics job, they expect that person to come in having experience with the system, which, which is pretty amazing. <clears throat> okay. So that's my quick update of what's happened in the last year. You're gonna hear a lot more technical stuff from all the folks who are gonna give the talks. A couple of logistics uh, announcements. So you've seen that there are beverages out there, coffee and sodas, those are gonna be there all day. We're gonna have food during the breaks, the morning and afternoon. Lunch is gonna be on your own. Uh, we might throw up a slide about the recommending some places, but you've all got resources to find restaurants and there are a lot within the area. Uh, there will be a uh, cocktail reception uh, this evening at 6.30 at the end of the day. That's a tradition at Roscon that we're definitely keeping. Um, a note for the speakers, if you, uh, when you get up here, I've been told by our, our AV people that you should project your voice and speak to, as if you're speaking to someone at the back of the room. Uh, just a, a note for the speakers. There is internet. Uh, here in the room, we've got Wi-Fi. Those are the details. I think they're also written down on something else that you've received. And with that, I will just thank our sponsors again, and uh, we will go on to our first talk. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Yes? What is the preferred file format for uh, the Lightning Talk slides? Preferred file format. I would guess that. Oh. So we have a Windows computer. We can do PDF, PowerPoint. It'll all get incorporated into one presentation. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you.